Okay, so in the earlier lecture, I talk about brief introduction to Galilean transformation. Now, here I will discuss that how Galilean transformation leads to transformation, uh, leads to Lorentz transformation and special theory of relativity. I will split this into two parts, right? So, this is the first part in this. I will start uh, need of some experiment and that is known as michelson morley experiment. So let me recall again uh, Lorentz transformations. Say this is the moving frame of reference and it is moving with some velocity v. That means in t time it travels a distance vt. It's moving along and say there is some observation point is at somewhere in space p. From this frame of reference this particle's position will be shown like this. and say its position in one frame of reference is r and when seen say it is a moving frame of reference and it is a stationary frame of reference say it is uh, uh, y axis it is y axis so it is let me call it as primed axis means y prime and it is x axis and it is also x axis so it is a prime and say it is z prime and it is z axis and from this frame of reference its position vector is like this it's represented uh, like this so it is r vector and it is r prime vector now they are related to each other according to Galilean transformation. So if I recall Galilean transformation, R prime is equal to R minus Vt. And if I take derivative on by both sides, let me call this as equation number, not Vt, but let me call this as uh, Ut. Let me call this as equation number 1. Sorry, it is U. Is moving with along this direction with Vt. So if I take derivative on both sides then I can say that r prime is equal to r dot minus u. Let me call this as equation number one and this can also be written as v prime is equal to v minus u. And let me call this as equation number two. If I take again its derivative, here I have taken time derivative. And if I again take time derivative, and this u is constant, because moving frame of reference is moving with constant velocity u. If I take again its derivative, then it is known as r double dot prime is equal to r double dot. Or I can say that acceleration in prime frame of reference and acceleration in the non-prime frame of reference. Let me call this as equation number 3. Now, if I try to look at equation number 2, that means velocity is not invariant. 
velocity is not invariant quantity but acceleration is invariant means when we i try to look at the velocity of the particle from the two frame of references then velocity will be different but acceleration will remain the same acceleration will not change so that means equation 2 will suggest that that means this equation 2 thus equation 2 suggest that that velocity will be different in in two different frame of reference different frame of references thus if we observe a speed of light thus if we observe a observe light which was found to be constant which is found to be constant 3 into 10 is to power 8 meter per second in electrodynamics or electromagnetic theory this is found in the electromagnetic theory that speed of light is constant so thus if we observe light from two different frames it will be different different according to galilean transformation galilean transformation so this is the main drawback of galilean transformation that it was not able to explain the constancy of speed of light so to check this a series of experiments will be performed one such experiment is uh, michelson morley experiment so and it was also assumed that uh, let me go back sorry let me go back so to check this means to test this to validate this so that a series of experiment have been performed and one such experiment is is michelson morley Michelson Morley experiment was performed and during this performance it was assumed that that a medium is always present it was assumed that
medium is always required for the propagation of light. of light and this medium is known as ether and the idea was taken from as for the traveling of sound waves we require a material medium that's why we have assumed that a medium is also required for the propagation of light means a hypothesis of ether was given Ether was assumed or was given. Right? So, let me go to the next slide then. So, ether means uh, a search for the absolute frame of reference, means the wave nature of light suggests that there exists a propagation propagation medium and we call that propagating medium is ether and ether was proposed as an absolute reference in which the speed of light was constant it was assumed that speed of light is constant in absolute in this ether and from which other measurements could be made and ether was assumed to be transparent and it must have zero density and was everywhere. It was assumed. It is the assumption. Right? So if earth is rotating like this, then ether seems to be rotating like this. It seems that if earth starts rotating in this direction, then it's, it is moving in the opposite direction. Because ether at rest but when earth is moving starts like this, then ether is assumed to be moving in the opposite direction. It seems like that according to relativity. So, an experiment was performed by Michelson and Morley to show the existence of the ether, right? To show the existence of the ether means if ex if ether was there, then how things will change? That's what what we we'll, what we will study in this lecture. So, Michelson Morley performed a very beautiful experiment. This was the experiment which were performed by Michelson Morley. There is a monochromatic source of light. It falls at this. It is a monochromatic source of light. Monochromatic source of light. And light goes here. And then it goes to, falls on this mirror and then come back. And then observed through this telescope. And then it will go there and then come back and then here. So light goes like this. And from this it will go like this and then come back. And after that, it is observed through the telescope. And similarly, it goes from here to like this, towards this mirror, and then come back, and, and then again. And both will interfere. Right? And this was the experiment which was performed. And this can be rotated. This whole of the arrangement can be rotated. So let us have a demonstration or sorry, let us briefly discuss that how the things will happen in this experiment. So that means there is a source of light from which light is assumed to come. This is the source of light S and say there is a glass plate partially silver it is partially silver or half silver and say light is coming from here
and then it goes like this and then there is a mirror mirror will be placed at this point and there is another mirror which is placed at this point also like this they are mirrors they are mirrors they are mirrors and then it will goes to this mirror right and it will again come back so it goes like this uh, sorry uh, let me yeah it goes like this and then this and then this way and then come back and here we have placed a compensating plate compensating glass plate we have also placed here to compensate the yeah it's a glass plate g1 and it's a glass plate g will be placed here and then it come back and as it is partially silvered so it will from here it gets reflected from here and this goes like this from here it goes like this and then it goes to the mirror and then come back so that means it goes like this like this and then come back and then again through this path and it will goes to the telescope it will goes to the telescope so when it goes to the telescope telescope will be placed here and it's a telescope and then it come so both will come back and both will interfere here me do one thing uh, and then it will come back yeah it's like this and then this light uh, this will uh, come back like this and it was uh, let me do one thing yeah let me draw telescope again yeah it is telescope so it was observed through this so both the rays will interfere here and we can see the uh, we can see the interference pattern now the whole arrangement was chosen in such a manner that there is a distance d between this mirror m2 and this say it is point a it is point p and it is point b and here again the distance will be d will be the same 
right it is a point c so this is the experimental arrangement to perform this experiment such that ab is equal to bc now let us assume that Uh, let us assume that uh, c is velocity of light in stationary frame of reference right that's what we have to keep in mind and say v is the velocity of moving frame velocity of moving frame and here moving frame is earth earth is the moving frame and therefore velocity of light velocity of light in moving frame frame that is at moving frame is at with respect to moving frame its velocity will be c prime is equal to c minus v right this is the velocity in the moving frame now we will talk about the round trip time taken by the round trip to light go from a to b and then b to a then i will talk about the round trip from a to c and c to a so time now i will talk about first of all time for round trip for light between a to b and then b to a that is for the path a to b to a right this is the round trip now effective velocity now effective velocity v1 in earth frame effective velocity v1 in the earth frame for journey a to b is given as that v1 is equal to c minus v that's what we have assumed here here ether wind is opposed to the direction of motion of beam because beam is moving like this and earth is rotating like this so ether's direction will be like this as we have seen in the earlier direction right so that means this is the velocity effective velocity when beam is moving towards this direction therefore time taken for this journey it is t1 is equal to d over v1 means it is from a to b for this journey it is d over v1 so we call it as d over c minus v we are writing simply in terms of magnitude now time taken for b to a for b to a it is like this 
B2A. Here, B2A, it means here the velocity will be, that is V2 is equal to C plus B. Because when light is coming in this way, the ether is also moving along this direction. So that means we can say that for such a situation, V2 will be C over V and time taken will be T2 and it is D over B2. So I call it as T over C plus B. So thus, round trip, time taken for round trip will be, so for round trip, that is A to B to A, total time, it is T1 and let me call it as T1 plus T2. So let me do little algebra, it is C minus V plus D over C plus B. It is D into C plus V plus D into C minus B and it is C square minus B square, right? So it is equal to DC plus DV plus DC minus DV and this will cancel out and it is C square minus V square and it is equal to 2dc over c square minus b square it is equal to 2dc c square can be taken outside to 1 minus b square over c square so this will cancel out with it so that means i can write down expression for t1 t1 is equal to 2d upon c and 1 minus b square or c square minus 1 right that's what i'm getting but Velocity of earth will be 30 km per second or we can say that 3 into 10 raised to power 4 meter per second and C is equal to 3 into 10 raised to power 8 meter per second. So, V by C is very much less than 1. So, therefore, I can use binomial approximation here. So I can write down it is 2d by c 1 minus minus 1 v square y c square under the root nearly equal to. So that means t1 can be written as 2d upon c 1 plus v square over c square, right? So this is the time for the round trip when j is traveling along x-axis, right? Then time taken by light. Next is time taken by light to go from A to C and back C to A means it is along the y-axis. That's what we have assumed and it is along the y-axis, right? Means, uh, let me show you the diagram now again. This is for this diagram. Means when ray is going from A to C and then come back C to A. So, when ray is traveling along this direction, but ether is moving along this direction. Ether is moving along this direction and ray is traveling along this direction. Right? Sorry. Ether is moving along this direction. The direction of motion of the ether will be this one. So, that means if I try to see this, uh, try to see this situation, that means this is y-axis this is x axis and say ether is moving along this direction that means when ray shooted from this situation means when ray travel then with some it moves to like this it seems like this so that means I can say that this is the direction of C and this is the direction of V and say that means 
it is the u so and say it is making an angle theta so that means u will be the effective velocity of beam along y axis right so using triangle law of vector addition c plus v is equal to u and from here i can say that c is equal to u minus v or i can say that c square is equal to u minus v whole square so it is u square plus v square minus 2 ub cos of 90 because there is a angle 90 degree between these two so it is c square is equal to u square plus v square so i can say that u square is equal to c square minus v square so or you can say that it is c square minus v square under the root so now as time taken was the same as it goes to here and then it come back like this so that means time taken to go to a to c to a again because a seems to be here when light is traveling like this so that means time taken will always be same so that means a to c time taken will be t1 prime and c to a time taken is again t1 t2 prime and t1 and t2 prime are equal t1 prime is equal to t2 prime so that means t1 prime can be written as d upon u means d upon c square minus v square under the root and t2 prime can also be written as d upon c square minus v square under the root or you can say that d upon u right so that's what i am getting so that means total time of the round trip total time of round trip will be it is t2 it is t1 prime plus t2 prime and it can be written as d upon c square minus v square under the root plus d upon c square minus v square under the root that means it is 2d upon c square minus v square under the root so it is 2d upon c can be taken outside the root so it is 1 minus v square upon c square under the root so it is 2d upon c 1 minus v square of c square raised to power minus 1 by 2 again applying one uh, again expanding binomially so it is 2d upon c 1 minus minus 1 by 2 v square upon c square right so expanding binomially so it is 2d upon c 1 plus v square over c uh, square right so here i have expanded binomially or used binomial approximation because v over c is very much less than 1 and 1 plus x raised to power n is equal to 1 plus n x when x is very much less than 1 this is the binomial approximation which i used here so t2 will be this one so thus i have got the time that t2 is equal to 1 to d upon c 1 my 1 plus b square upon c square right sorry 2 will be also be there so time difference between two beams for their round trip is is there is a some part difference so the time difference between two beams for their 
round trip is t and it is t2 minus t1 sorry t1 minus t2 so it is 2d upon c 1 plus v square over c square minus 2d upon c 1 plus v square over c square it is 2d upon c here 1 plus v square over c square minus 1 minus sorry 2 will be here so it is v square minus 2c square this will cancel out with it so it is 2v square minus v square upon 2c square and 2dyc this two will cancel out with it so it is v d v square over c cube it is t this is the time difference Thus, there is an optical path difference Thus, there is optical path difference delta x between two beams corresponding to time difference t and is given as it is velocity multiplied by time difference is equal to delta x and this is equal to c into dv square over c cube this will cancel out with it so that means delta x can be written as dv square over c square so this is the path difference now what will happen this is the initial picture now whole of the arrangement is rotated through 90 degree that means this will goes to this point and this goes to here and this goes to here and telescope seems to be here like this right so when this was done then this was the arrangement which we are observing the source will goes to here right and this will go this and this introduces this whole of the arrangement let me go back and let me write down this that uh, what will happen if this will happen that means this will means when whole apparatus is turned through 90 degree so that beam interchange interchanges their path and AB becomes perpendicular to incident beam and AC becomes parallel to incident beam means initially AB is parallel but in this case AB will become because this is now will become AB and AB will become perpendicular right 
and ac is here parallel and here it is along this right if this will happen that means the path difference gets doubled means path difference gets doubled so thus path difference due to 90% rotation becomes delta and it is twice of delta x let me call it as 2d v square y c square now it will become equal to this one and due to this path difference due to this path difference there should be shift in the fringes right means fringe shift should be observed now fringe shift delta n is equal to this is the fringe shift this fringe shift is equal to delta over lambda means 2d v square over c square 1 by lambda this should be the fringe shift so if d which you are using means which was used as 11 meter and say lambda is equal to 5900 angstrom means 5 into 9 into 5.9 into 10 is to the minus 7 meter and as we know that v by c is equal to v is 3 into 10 is to per uh, because 30 km per second so it is 10 is to per 4 and 3 into 10 is to per minus 8 meter per second meter per second so it is 10 is to per minus 4 we are getting so if i put these values here then it is 2 into 11 and v by c is 10 is to per minus 4 square and 1 by lambda means 1 over 5.9 into 10 is to per minus 7 everything is meter and it is nearly equal to 0.37 0.37 that means this is the fringe shift which must be observed it is our theoretical prediction now let me discuss this result that what actually was expected right because this is this fringe shift should not be there because no fringe shift should be there because the result which we are getting we are getting a negative versus so let me go to the next slides and that will help us means the experiment was very sensitive enough to detect a shift of 0.01 and experiment carried out at different places at different times around the year but no fringe shift was ever detected means threat experimentally we didn't observed any fringe shift that means the result was termed as negative or null result and conclusion drawn from the null result that means what conclusion we are drawing from this null result that there is no ether like medium permeating the entire universe means there is no ether no ether present means there is a vacuum nothing is there no medium will be there as we are expecting that some medium should be there another thing which we are getting that speed of light in free space is constant in all directions of propagation and is not affected due to motion of the observer right so these are the conclusion we are getting out of this experiment 
end. It was the only experiment Michelson, for which Michelson wins the Nobel Prize in Physics, mostly for his famous field experiment. Field means we are expecting that after doing this experiment, we, we, we can show the presence of ether, but we are not able to show that. It is the null result, right? So this is all about uh, this experiment. That means a new theoretical formulation is needed. So Lawrence proposed new type of transformations based on this experiment and uh, parallel to that uh, Einstein proposed the uh, new postulates of special theory of relativity and both gave the same results right and another drawback of uh, this what we call a uh, Lorentz trans oh, sorry Galilean transformation that Galilean transformation are uh, not invariant uh, sorry uh, if we apply the Galilean transformation then Maxwell equations are not found to be invariant under Galilean transformation means another thing what that people observe that Maxwell equations, Maxwell's equations are not invariant under Galilean transformation. Means a new transformations are needed or new theory is needed to justify the things right because uh, constancy of speed of light is also a consequence of Maxwell's equations right so that's all for this lecture in the next lecture I will talk about uh, Galilean uh, sorry uh, in the next lecture I will talk about uh, Lorentz transformation and then I will uh, go to the uh, postulates of special theory of relativity. That's all for this lecture.